Hey everybody, I'm Joshua Oro, the Mustang Prince, and welcome to Mustang Prince or Reports. Now, in my last episode, I blogged the first Kung Fu Panda movie, and while it wasn't an Oscar champion at the time, it's still considered as one of DreamWorks' best animated films next to Shrek and How to Train Your Dragon. Also, after it was released in theaters, it was followed by a semi-sequel called Kung Fu Panda Secrets of the Furious Five, which told the stories of Tigress, Mantis, Viper, Crane, and Monkey, and how they became Kung Fu Masters. And there was a holiday special called Kung Fu Panda Holiday, where Poe is assigned to host the annual Winter Feast. And of course, during mid-2011, like every great hit, a theatrical sequel was released. And of course, it's the subject of my blog today. Released on May 26, 2011, the movie is Kung Fu Panda 2. So, on with the blog. The saga of Poe continues with the new dragon warrior teaming with the Furious Five to protect the Valley of Peace. However, a new dangerous villain threatens Poe's awesome new life with plans to use a secret weapon to wipe out the martial arts and conquer China. In order to defeat the new enemy, Poe must now recall his past and unlock secrets of his mysterious origins. Only then will he find the strength to vanquish his most powerful opponent to date. So, how was this sequel? Was it better than the first movie? Well, you better believe it was. And it has got to be one of my all-time favorite animated sequels ever, up there with Shrek 2 and How to Train Your Dragon 2. And like the Avengers of Tintin, this has got to be one of the best animated films of 2011 ever. But now, let's move on to Mustang Notes. After the original Kung Fu Panda was released in June 2008, DreamWorks Animation planned a second film with the subtitle of Pandemonium, which was changed by 2010 to the Kaboom of Doom, before simply being retitled to Kung Fu Panda 2. Jennifer Yoy Nelson, who was head of story for the first film, was hired to replace John Stevenson and Mark Osborne as director for the sequel due to the fact that they wouldn't be returning. Like every DreamWorks animated film from Monsters vs. Aliens onward, Kung Fu Panda 2 was produced in DreamWorks stereoscopic 3D technology of in true 3D. Jonathan Abel and Glenn Berger, the screenwriters and co-producers for the first movie, returned to write and co-produce the sequel, along with Charlie Kaufman consulting on the screenplay early on in the development process. For Kung Fu Panda 2, the production crew showed increased familiarity with Chinese culture. In 2008, after the release of Kung Fu Panda, DreamWorks CEO Jeffrey Katzenberg and other DreamWorks members including production designer Raymond Zabak and director Jennifer Yoy Nelson visited the city of Chengdu, which is considered as the panda hometown. In addition to seeing real pandas at the Giant Panda Research Center, the production designer crew members learned about the local culture. In fact, Katzenberg has stated that the sequel incorporates many elements of Chengdu in the movie. The film's landscape and architecture also found inspiration from those found at Mount Quincheng, a renowned Taos mountain. In an interview with the China Daily, Zabak recounted that the Panda Research Center influenced the movie in a big way, as did their experience of holding a month-old panda cub named Abao, which gave the idea for Baby Po in a flashback. It also gave them the idea of featuring food like Mapo Tofu and Dundan noodles. In an interview with Movie Line, Berger stated that we never really thought of this as a movie set in China for Americans. It's a movie set in a mythical, universalized China for everyone in the world. Now, before I go any further, I just want to say 
that when I saw Kung Fu Panda 2 in theaters, not only did I see it in 3D, but I also saw it with my good friend Daniel Guzman. And to me, that was a very special and thrilling experience. Also, in my opinion, not only is DreamWorks CGI animation for this movie amazing, but I think the Chinese shadow puppetry used for the opening prologue is very beautiful and mysterious. And I think the 2D animation that's used for Poe's flashback, his dream sequence, and the travel montage is just outstanding, as well as thought-provoking and epic. Plus, I absolutely love the look of Gongmen City, which to me looks very ancient and mysterious. And I also think the kung fu sequences and the action scenes are absolutely badass. Also, like the first film, there are no pop culture references featured, which to me is nice since this franchise relies on its own humor, kind of like the How to Train Your Dragon franchise. Of course, another thing that makes this movie so awesome is its executive producer, Guillermo del Toro, which to me does obviously explain some of the dark moments of the movie. And of course, like some sequels out there, this film includes character development for almost everybody. Speaking of which, let's talk about the voice actors who brought each character to life. The main hero and dragon warrior, Poe, is voiced by Jack Black, best known from Tenacious D, School of Rock, the 2005 King Kong remake, the Goosebumps movies, the Jumanji sequels, DreamWorks Shark Tale, and he'll be voicing Bowser in the upcoming Super Mario Brothers movie this April. Like the first movie, Poe is very excitable and he's a huge fan of Kung Fu. Also, I like that during this movie, we learn about Poe's origins, where he was originally born in a farming village inhabited by other pandas, until that fateful night when Poe became separated from his family as a result of a massacre instigated by Lord Shen. And after seeing a few flashbacks from his past upon seeing Shen's symbol, Poe becomes very desperate for answers about what happened to his family. Next we come to the Furious Five. Tigress, voiced by Angelina Jolie. Mantis, voiced by Seth Rogen. Crane, voiced by David Cross. Viper, voiced by Lucy Liu. And Monkey, voiced by Jackie Chan. Like I said previously, the five are the most skilled warriors in China. And... I love their friendship with Poe while fighting alongside him. Also, I still stand by that Tigress sticks out the most out of the five, and unlike the first film, where she was a no-nonsense tomboy character, I'm glad that in this movie and in the third one, she's a lot nicer, and she seems like the kind of character who has a sensitive side and lets you cry on her shoulder if you needed to. Master Shifu is voiced by Dustin Hoffman, well known from The Graduate, Tootsie, Hook, along with Racing Stripes, and The Tale of Despero. For those who may not remember, in the first movie, due to Tai Long's betrayal, Shifu was a bitter and strict character, especially when he had to train Po. But after Tai Long's defeat, Shifu becomes a more relaxed master and he finds inner peace. And during this movie, he has been more pleasant, but he still keeps within his ways of being the master of Kung Fu. And after hearing the news of Master Rhino's death, he's counting on Po and the Furious Five to go to Gongmen City to stop Lord Shen. Otherwise, Kung Fu will be obliterated. Now we come to the new villain, Lord Shen a tyrannical peacock voiced by Gary Oldman, who played Bob Cratchit and Jacob Marley in Robert Zemeckis' A Christmas Carol, Sirius Black from the Harry Potter film series, James Gordon from the Christopher Nolan Batman trilogy, and of course, Ruber from Quest for Camelot. Now to me, this guy was a way better villain than Tai Lung from the first movie. I mean, 
He has his own kingdom, an enormous army, incredible knowledge of kung fu, as well as knives on his talons, and he has the ability to fly using his tail feathers as a glider. And furthermore, he invented the cannon. Plus, I thought his backstory on when he became interested in gunpowder and when his family disowned him was very thought-provoking. And I thought his most villainous moment was when he led his wolf guards into a massacre against the giant panda population, including Poe's family. Plus, I thought the part where Poe managed to defeat him by deflecting and redirecting the cannonballs back at him, destroying Shen's fleet in the process, was absolutely amazing before his cannon crushed him to death and exploded. Another character to talk about is Poe's adoptive father, Mr. Ping, voiced by the delightful James Hong, best known from Big Trouble in Little China, Pixar's Turning Red, Disney's Mulan, Wendell and Wilde, and Hero. Now, in my eyes, for this movie, Ping felt more like a loving father rather than the hyperventilating noodle shop owner he was in the first film. Plus, the scene where he tells Poe about the day when he found him as a cub was a very touching moment, and it really made me want to cry. Next, we come to Lord Shen's Soothsayer, voiced by Michelle Yeoh. Best known from the James Bond movie, Tomorrow Never Dies, Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dragon, along with other films like The School of Good and Evil, Everything Everywhere All at Once, Paws of Fury, The Legend of Hank, Minions, The Rise of Gru, the MCU's Shang-Chi movie, and soon, she'll be playing Madame Morrible in the upcoming Wicked two-parter movie starting next year. Now, the Soothsayer is an elderly Kashmir goat, and she's Lord Shen's former nanny, who foretold of the Peacock's doom. To me, she seemed like a very mysterious and hospitable character, and I like that she aids Poe while treating him with acupuncture and a herbal mixture after his presumed death. Plus, she knows what Lord Shen did to Poe's village, and she helps him stop fighting his memories in order to achieve inner peace. Other characters in the film include Master Thundering Rhino, voiced by Victor Garber, Master Crocodile, voiced by Jean-Claude Van Damme, a.k.a. Mr. I Can't Do an American Accent for Crap, Master Storming Ox, voiced by Dennis Haysburg, and The Wolf Leader, voiced by Danny McBride. And now, on to my final words. Overall, Kung Fu Panda 2 is an incredibly awesome sequel. It has great animation, amazing kung fu choreography, great humor, an epic story, and plenty of memorable characters, old and new. And so, I give this movie the highest rating of 100%. So, now that I've covered all three movies, I'm hoping that the fourth movie coming up in March 2024 will be a great film to look forward to. Well, that's all for now, everybody. Be sure to join me for my next blog, Mustang Power. Ugh. Been in the hospital for almost three months after being set on fire. And I can't believe he's still giving hope to those wretched Chinese scumbags. And so far, my progress shows that there are more COVID cases than deaths from my virus. <sighs> my life is a living Tartarus now. Uh, yes, just a bit low on my energy. Really? Another film from there? What film could those unruly wretches release and distribute to the Americans? Hmm. Seems interesting. And now that you mention it, I'm curious to what the Mustang Prince will say about it. <laughs> 
of my ribs.